as we narrow down the circle a little bit push inwards the body is not alone the body finds itself in a sea of other bodies we are not only part of the ecosystem we are a part of the society also and our survival is deeply connected to other people in other words we are social animals there is no escape from this even a seeker is not completely free from this relationship so we make these relationships for various reasons and you can guess that all kinds of impurities enter the relationships because of the ignorance that not only cause suffering that will retard your spiritual progress it is a big impurity actually because it involves others some of the impurities you can fix it very quickly because it is your own personal matter things that we are going to discuss in future this one is very tricky before we proceed i want to again warn you that this is a very straight talk there is no sugar coating at all this is your path of knowledge if you are not familiar with it you will find it very very offensive and impolite so those who are weak hearted those who are easily offended should not listen to this talk or any of the talk on purification what happens is that everybody has got impurities and when the ego hears it from uh, such kind of talk it retaliates it rebels that is very very uncomfortable you need to see it to believe it the reactions are sometimes extreme why i don't why don't i sugar coat these things why don't i make it polite and uh, like very loving and kind it has no effect that's why how do you treat impurities when there is trash in your house when there is dirt in your house do you treat it with kindness and compassion oh no everything is rotting in my kitchen i'll just keep it there are life forms in it no we simply pick it and throw it away remember there is a difference between kindness and stupidity so we start with uh, the bitter truth the reality of the relations all the relations are mind created they are all illusory their purpose is nothing but survival as soon as i say relations it is nothing an arrangement for survival of the body that which manages the relations is the layer of the ego and therefore most of the relations are formed at the level of ego or below it there is hardly any relation above it is very mild if there is any heavy stuff you can say it so there is no father there is no mother there is no child no grandmother no grandfather no friends no enemies no ruled no ruler no employee no employer these are names given to mutual interactions that enable survival there is a layer on it which makes the ego think that these things are real and when they break or when they don't go as per your wishy washy thoughts uh, it causes retardation it causes suffering not not only for you it will because relation is between the two it causes immense suffering to the other also it is written in your account you need to be very careful it is impossible to not relate because we are in the illusion we are we are bound here in human form and we need to survive otherwise there was no point in coming here so what we do because it is a tricky matter it's not possible to make it clear it completely we find ways to somehow adjust in the society remember it's not going to be ideal and it's not going to be constant i am not pro- promising you a la la land of relations where everybody loves everybody other if you think like this you are deluded it is always going to be some kind of adjustment compromise there most of the people are already offended <laughs> i know for a human it is not possible to be selfless and therefore there will be this impurity you will need to manage it somehow everybody has this challenge don't worry it's not that you are helpless help is here we'll find out what are the impurities and then we'll find out 
what can be done to minimize them drop your expectations drop your hope the most natural and immediate relations that we enter with other people is so called the blood relatives or personal relations these relations are formed by mother nature we enter into voluntary relations with others we call them relatives the first impurity that we find in this relation is extreme attachment it happens because there is extreme dependency the child is attached to the mother because his survival depends on the mother similarly mother is attached to the child because the progeny is dependent on this attachment is it a, an impurity and most of you will say that no and i agree it is not an impurity it is very natural why is it in the Im- an impurity because it outlives its welcome i can see that if a child is attached to the mother it's nice it is required but uh, if there is an attachment even at the age of 30 40 60 70 <laughs> something is wrong there and by attachment i don't mean a simple attachment simple love it is extreme there is dependency in uh, relations everybody agrees with it because you cannot have a relation if there is no dependency for a seeker it is an impurity the seeker wants to be independent and the biggest dependency is financial the child depends on the father for providing um, for food and uh, education and all the comforts stuff and the wife depends on the husband for basic survival and so on this is an impurity there is a limit up to which the de- de- the dependency works after that it causes suffering many relations are simply barter you give me this much i'll give you that much you do these things for me and i'll do those things for you there is no attachment here there is pure dependency and they find a way of give and take to somehow keep the relation on this is a big impurity as soon as there is nothing to give or as soon as the other is not giving you what you want the relation is over and people exploit each other they want to cut down their part in the barter one partner dominates it happens in case of let us say father and son husband and wife and so on it is an unhealthy kind of relation where there where there is dependency where there is give and take and when there is one side that is dominant and exploiting the relation similarly if one side is submissive it is an unhealthy relation i don't need to say that it is a recipe of suffering but many relations are like this even those so called blood relations there are relations where dependency attachment and hate they oscillate whenever somebody does something good for you you get instant emotion of love and attachment the same person does something which you don't like you get a emotion of hate disgust for the same person that can be an evidence that everything is in the mind there is there is no real relation here the mind is creating the relations on demand sometimes it is indifferent carelessness sometimes it is dominance or submission or whatever barter it oscillates so i'm calling it the love and hate relations the mind picks whatever it wants depending on its needs whenever you need you call your girlfriend whenever you don't you forget and you call somebody else this is very unhealthy kind of relation you can see the impurity here the impurity is not in the other the impurity is in the mind it's not the impurity of the body also the body has its needs and it is obeying whatever you are telling it to do many relations are just fake relations they are held up to show off their social status or something like this for example the son hates his father but he does not want to be called mannerless indisciplined non obedient so he keeps going he poses with his father as oh he is my father i am his son i respect my father but there is no such relation there it is fake 
and uh, a major part of the fake relations are between men and women it's all fake there are fake love affairs people fake relations because they get something if your uncle is very rich he is your uncle otherwise who cares if your brother is beggar and drug addict not my brother if he is at on a high post somewhere in the government and rich yes my brother is best it is all fake survival dependent then we have something which is very dirty which is called illegal relation now the body does not know here what is legal what is illegal it does whatever it does the emotions they don't know what is legal what is illegal the society decides what is legal you have already signed a pact with a man or a woman and then you are sleeping with somebody else in your eyes this is perfectly normal but from the point of view of the society it is illegal if you don't like this kind of bondage then you shouldn't have signed the document you shouldn't have gone to the priest there are many kinds of illegal relations actually incest for example society does not like it and in some cultures the homosexuality and things like that they are illegal they are considered unnatural why is that an impurity oh it is my preference if you are a seeker the society will cause a lot of trouble for you either you get out of that society find some other country or culture or you do not enter the illegal relations it is an impurity and the biggest of all impurities is a relation called marriage it is simply a legal arrangement of some kind and uh, it is a vestige of the slavery system the women were held slaves of the men the word husband simply means owner of the slaves owner of a lot of animals and it has transformed a little bit and there are laws around it but uh, it is a social arrangement it is the fakest kind of relation that you can find in society and uh, the worst part is all the above impurities are found in the relation of the marriage if you are a seeker and you are married well the road is very bumpy for you anyway we will we'll find out some solutions for it we move on to the next kind of relations which is with uh, friends these are not relatives but you love them a lot that will be ideal friendship and the friendship means no give and take you don't want anything you simply like that other person it is not need based ideally it's a free it's a feel good and selfish kind of relation impurities enter in this relation also such as you like the other fellow but you don't like him to be successful this happens among seeker seekers also how is that the other seeker friend has achieved more spiritual success than me this is the feeling of competition friends can be extremely competitive you cannot compete with a stranger it's not really that sticky but uh, when you see your friends rushing past you and miles ahead of you in any terms in any situation competition happens and that is because of the jealousy probably we are not jealous of somebody in the other town or in the other country or whatever but you are extremely jealous of your neighbor if he gets something why because your neighbor is your friend there is a relation there you need to see his face every day there are friendships that are use and throw as soon as i know that you are useful for me you are my friend look we are friends will do this together please do this for me as soon as the job is over i delete your number there are people who will lick the feet of a person for their gain or they want something and they'll call you a friend you are so good you are so kind you are so loving and you are so rich <laughs> the truth cannot be hidden only rich people are my friends this is not friendship this is an impurity and even if there is a friendship it is an impurity because it has turned into a feet licking behavior then there are some poor souls who enter into a friendship only because they are rejected and dejected kind they are lonely people i am your friend because nobody talks to me this is not friendship there is no real relationship here 
and some people will say you mean the lonely people should not make any friends well that is not the point here and the point is it is driven by a need not by love you don't have any option so you found somebody and you call him a friend please spend time with me i get bored this is the impurity here the next kind of uh, relations that uh, we need to enter with other people especially in the modern world our co-workers the people in your office or workplace this is a strange affair here they come together for nothing but selfishness that is very obvious it is kind of accepted that i am working with you not because i like you or some other relation it is because i want something i am getting money for for the work and you happen to be my co-worker but because there is an interaction because there is a team work there involved because one person has to obey uh, the other person has to order and there is a tension here and these relations also become impure actually most of them are impure so the workplace is full of selfish people they treat you like trash wherever there is profit there is good relation there is partiality the boss prefers those who work hard and demand less money actually the situation is so bad that most of the cultures they consider it as normal from the point of view of of a seeker this is disgusting there is a place where all kinds of filthy selfish people are stuffed in and they are just using misusing abusing each other for money you can see that it is purely based on survival survival of the fittest which means the extremely cunning and uh, lowest kind will be successful here this is so called modern society civilized cultures all the relations here are made for profit if there is a loss there is no relation there is a lot of exploitation here usually the people who are at the top they are exploiting the people at the bottom and there can be a reverse thing that uh, and the bo- the people at the bottom they exploit the people at the top they know that the management's needs me and so they exploit them it is kind of impossible to enter into a pure relation here that everybody gets what they deserve i have never seen such thing and the major impurity here is that because there is a dependency on the other there is chance of abuse this happens especially with women they need to earn money they need to go to a boss and ask for a job and here the boss gets a chance to abuse that person sometimes it is sweet diplomatic abuse sometimes it's give and take okay i give you the job you give me whatever i want and sometimes it is just plain dominance do it or i'll fire you yes women are easy target here this is an impure relation they keep doing it because they have no option they don't have any other job remember there is no such thing as a good job it is all impure another important kind of relationship is relationship with teachers and the teachers include the spiritual teachers the gurus a guru is kind of very important person for a seeker and there is a relation between these two persons you cannot avoid the impurities here even if you are in not in a spiritual field you will encounter teachers like in school and colleges even in your workplace you you will be trained somebody will teach you if there's if there is a teacher and the teacher is instructing 100 people at the same time you cannot call it a relation it is just the occupation there is no one to one interaction or it is minimal and it it is very very formal most of the time the teacher does not know their names also this happens in the spiritual settings also that there is one guru who is speaking and there are thousand people disciples they are simply sitting there listening and they call him my guru it's not a relation it is an impurity so it is simply indifference i am getting something so i'll teach you and then bye bye this is a business arrangement when you enroll in the school there is a fellow who earns some money for teaching you whatever is written in a book recommended by your government what do they learn who knows 
What do they teach? Who knows? They are there for money. Teachers can be extremely greedy. I'll teach you this if you pay me this much. This is found in the spiritual circles also. They become teachers, they become guru because it is an easy way to earn money. We call seekers very very intelligent but they are stupid in the beginning at least. They are easy to exploit. Teachers exploit their students. It is usually money but it can be service, it can be other agenda. There are extremes here where the teachers, especially the religious kind, can use their students to spread violence and hate, commit crimes, wars. There are teachers that abuse the students. If you don't do this, I am going to fail you in the exam. And there are gurus that abuse students in their ashram. It is an act of brainwashing or sometimes plain dominance. Mostly women and children are abused like this. It is an impurity in the relation between the teacher and the student. Some of the teachers, they don't know anything. <laughs> they simply read from the book or sometimes they mislead the students knowingly and knowingly. This kind of teacher cannot be called a teacher. From the side of the students, there is an impurity which is seen as disrespect for the teacher. They are stuck with some teacher for some reason. Probably you are in a college, you want good grades, but you don't respect that teacher. You hate that teacher for some reason. Everybody knows that not all of your teachers were your favorite. It is an impure relation. Some people, especially in the spiritual field, they make teachers just to show off there is some kind of superiority complex here. Just like material people, they show off their superiority by flaunting their gold-coated stuff in the spiritual field. People show off their spirituality by telling how great their teacher is. Or they are following this big teacher. So, who is your teacher these days? And the other, fellow, other seeker will say, oh, such and such teacher, he has a 20 crore worth ashram in such and such place. Well, you are in the wrong place. He is not a real teacher. My teacher has 100 crore worth ashram and 10,000 disciples. I have seen this with my own eyes. People assert their superiority by telling the others that they know a te they have a teacher who is bigger than your teacher. Is it a relation between teacher and student? No, it's fake. And finally, there is a dependency between teacher and students. Teacher is dependent on the student for money and the student is dependent on the teacher for whatever, whatever they want. Dependency is not a healthy relation even in spiritual terms. There can be an attachment here. Sometimes the teachers get attached to the students. Sometimes the students get attached to the teacher. Please don't leave me because I have no other teacher. This is unhealthy relation. And finally, we check our relations with uh, people who are in the society but they are not related in any way. And we call them strangers. Usually, somehow, we manage the strangers. We tolerate. But it can become impure. And uh, there, in extreme cases, the behavior of the person becomes antisocial. That they hate everybody in the society. They cause harm to the society. Because you are not related to me, I can do anything with you. I can kill you, I can rob you, I can treat you in any way I want. I can insult you because you are a stranger. I have the freedom to run away. If you think it happens to only a few people like criminals, no, everybody does it. Even the most educated and cultured person does it. How do we treat strangers? How, how do we judge strangers? It is mostly... On the basis of what they are wearing, their clothes, how rich they look, what kind of car they are driving, what language they are speaking. It is on the basis of the race, the caste, the looks, whether they are beautiful or not. It is also the gender, there is gender bias there in treatment of the strangers. And we treat people of different ages differently. Old people get different treatment, young people get some other treatment. Teenagers, they get treated differently. We discriminate between strangers. They are not really strangers in this way. You have a relation there, which is de determined by the biases in the mind. 
The mind is very quick to form a relation with anybody. This is an impure relation. You are not related to me. You are not my friend. I am not getting anything from you. You are not paying me and you are not working for me. This is a good enough reason for some people to be violent towards others. You belong to the other country. You belong to the other race. I will just insult you. This is an impure relation with a stranger. Because you are useless for me, you are just standing in the line in front of me. You are actually causing harm to me by standing in front of me. So I will disrespect you. Because you are a stranger, you cannot do anything. And sometimes there is extreme fear in the minds of the people when they meet strangers. This happens to the women a lot. They are programmed to be fearful of people they don't know. This is our ancient heritage. And this causes an impurity in the relation with the strangers. They cannot talk to people. They cannot meet people. They cannot be with people without feeling uncomfortable. They need, somebody needs to hold their hand all the time. They cannot do even normal jobs like going to the ATM. Because who knows what these strangers can do to me. Even men have this kind of fear and they display it thoroughly when they are in other countries, in a foreign country. You can see that the behavior of the person is governed by fear. This is also an evolutionary artifact. We are uncomfortable with people who are not like us, strangers. And they show all these kind of behaviors that I mentioned, disrespect, violence and... Because fear breeds anger very quickly. Even one word can trigger violence there. There is intolerance. I cannot tolerate you because you are not related to me. It is a relation but an impure relation. Then there is indifference which everybody knows. This is the most common kind of relation with any stranger. We don't even want to look at the stranger. We treat them as if they are invisible. Or depending on the culture, we have a fake smile. And most, most of the time we are avoiding them. We don't want to face them. We don't want to talk to them. There is nothing bad here but it's kind of unnatural. And then finally we have a hierarchy in the society and it will always be there and it was always there. Some of the people they are ruler, some of or most of them are being ruled. So there comes the relation between your government and your law and orders and so on, military and so on. And I don't need to tell you that all of it is impure. It is a dependency of some kind. It is always an exploitation of some kind. It is always violent and full of disrespect. People are using each other all the time. There is no way out of it. So how to clean up these impurities? You know it already. Check whether your relations are like this. Check the presence of impurities. And this list is kind of very long. I gave you only a few examples. If you find the impurities, get rid of it. Get rid of them. Now you don't need to listen to me beyond this point. But those who are waiting for magic tricks to fix their relations quickly, I'll give you a few hints. That's all I have. If you are in a relation where there is extreme attachment, try to gradually distance yourself from that person. If the attachment is from the other side, you need to be careful. If it is from your side, there is no need to be careful. You can do it quickly also. If you are dependent on the other person for financial, for money, for anything else, for stuff, you don't have a house and so on, earn your own bread and butter. It's very easy. Do some work, get some skills, save some money and get out of that relation. If you are in a Give and take relation. Either you can simply stop doing it or you enter a giving relation. Ensuring that the other is not exploiting you. You enter a relation of service. You want my help? Okay, take. No, I want all of your bank balance. Now you need to be careful. And never ask anything in return. This is an instruction for the seekers. Be aware. Engage your awareness. Engage your intellect. Immediately. When you find that your ego is demanding something from somebody else, never expect anything from anybody. You can give if it is not causing harm to yourself and to the others. Please give me this much money 
I want to buy some drugs or I want to buy the gold jewelry. Now it is completely unnecessary to help in this case. You are not helping here. You are harming. So with this kind of discernment, you need to enter a relation of giving and only giving, not taking. If you want something, earn it yourself. If you find yourself being dominated by other person, get out of there. Take the help of authorities or something. If it is a violent kind of dominance, if you are dominating somebody, and then probably you are not a seeker. Probably you are not listening to my talk here. Do not dominate people, and do not be dominated. Don't be submissive. Maintain self-respect. Do not get into opportunistic relations of love and hate. It is better if there is no relation compared to this kind of. ego drama where the ego is left free to do whatever it wants you need to take control of it you need to see why there is love sometimes and why there is hate sometimes it is extreme selfishness of a cheap kind do not fake relations remember there is no relation all relations are already fake do not call somebody your relative just because you are getting something from there you think you are fooling others you are fooling yourself Do not get into illegal relations with minors or whatever your society says is Ill- illegal. It is not because it is ethical and ethical. It is simply a matter of convenience. You don't want to pay the price for that. Your goal is spiritual. Your goal is not to fight with the lawmakers. Oh, this is my choice. I'll go and change the law. No, that is your stupidity. Why do you need that relation so badly? So so badly that you are. hell bent on changing the laws also or you are hell bent on disrespecting the law there is a reason there is a law here then yes the immoral kind of relations they are no no because there is a karmic fruit all the time cannot avoid it and finally if you are married there is no hope for you no i'm just joking if you are unmarried think twice before getting into this kind of master slave relation or mutual dependency of some kind hold your horses see that it is your conditioning it is your indoctrination you don't really want to marry with anybody you see the idea of spending life with a stranger is horrible the idea that i'll get my bread and butter if i sleep with somebody else is horrible this is not a seeker thing the idea that i need a woman so that she can become a baby producing factory and also my slave to clean my clothes and all is inhuman think twice before doing this thing and if you have already done it <laughs> it's not too late you can still enter a relation of giving here be kind do not expect anything from the other if there are no children do not reproduce it should be common sense If there are children then you have no choice but to perform your duties take care of your family now now turn it into a learning opportunity here is where the rubber meets the road a relation is the biggest opportunity for learning you avoided it yes it's a good thing but now you are in the battle ground now you fight by which i mean that you fight your own demons check that how your selfishness comes up when you are with rel- relatives especially in the marriage condition check how your ego behaves check how it leads to attachments or dependencies and finally something which nobody wants to check you have made dependence it is an extreme impurity to make somebody else dependent on you set them free try to make them independent teach them how to earn their bread and butter give them some job put them on some job otherwise they are going to make your life hell oh no i have a child he is very little how can i yes you will need to bring up the child and as soon as he is of a suitable age kick him out teach him something and let him do his own job let him fend for himself it is a giving relation it is not avoidance by the time 20 years are over by the time you have lost the opportunity to be spiritual you are a worldly person but don't worry you have an experience here which is going to last for many lifetimes 
This experience will remain in the memory forever. The next birth will be cautious. It's never too late. Even for the married people, spiritual path is totally open. There are no restrictions. Why is it an impurity? Because you will see. You want to meditate and your partners, they don't cooperate. They think you are crazy. You want to go to a guru and your husband is suspicious. What is in the guru that's not in me? It's ego, it's jealousy, it's insecurity. I don't want to give you all, all the circumstances here. List is very long. Those who are married and are trying to be spiritual, trying to progress on a spiritual path, you can hear them cry. You are, they are sobbing now. I don't need to tell you everything. When you are with friends, be, be just friends. There is no need to compete with a friend. You need to help your friend. Otherwise, get out of that relation. It's not healthy. If you find jealousy arising or if you find the other person jealous of you, get out of there. It's not friendship. It is going to bring fruits. Don't use people and call them friends. Just enter a barter relation if you want something from, from somebody. Pay them a lot and just forget them. Do not be a feet licker. That's not friendship. And if somebody is with you as a friend and showing a feet licking behavior, you need to get out of there. You need to show some indifference. Turn the relation into a bad relation so that they don't show up again. You need to do whatever you can. There are no good or bad things here. How can I avoid him? It's not human. It's not kind. And then be ready to face the fruits of it. Just like you need, need to learn how to cooperate, you need to learn how to avoid. My advice is like, don't make friends that are not spiritual. And you will be saved a lot of trouble automatically. Because one spiritual person understands the other spiritual person. And don't let this friendship turn into some kind of marriage. Don't approach people if you are lonely. Make use of that time. It is an opportunity that every seeker is looking for. You want to be lonely. You want to be in solitude. You want to be left alone. Spirituality is about yourself. And if you don't want to be alone, then nobody can help you in this field. Remain alone most of the time. Not in the crowd of relations. Yes, people can do extreme things like they go to the cave and all. That is not really necessary. Just majority of your time should be with yourself and the rest with your teacher. And now you will progress. Otherwise, you will be distracted by every other kind of person. Relations are the greatest time wasters. Find a job where you are not dependent on the other people. Where there is least chance of abuse and exploitation. And I know such a job. It is called self-employment. Do not be an employee. Take on the role of employer if you can. There are many ways to earn money. Setting up a shop, becoming a freelancer, an artist or even renting your house is self-employment. Here, there is nobody to order you and that is a great relief. That brings peace of mind. Believe me or not, 90% of your problems in the society is because you need to earn and you are dependent on others for your survival. And if you do this one thing that you become an independent worker, you have solved 90% of your problems. Now it does not matter which country you live in, which society it is, whether you have relatives or friends or not, nothing matters now. Jobs are for incompetent people who cannot earn themselves and do not employ a lot of people. They will also turn your life into hell. They will try to exploit you. They will be there with you because you are paying them. They will deliver low quality whenever they can. You will end up doing their jobs and paying them also. They will manipulate you to be in the job. And if you get good people under you, do not exploit them. I need not say it. Pay them more than they deserve. Keep them happy. For a seeker, the ideal thing is no employer and no employee. That is the ideal. That is my experience. As soon as people enter your bread and butter thing, 
it becomes dirty it becomes impure the egos they like conflict a lot and if you're standing between me and my food it gets very tense very quickly keep your survival simple and keep your job simplest there is no need to do more than that which is absolutely necessary and yes if you're talented you are most welcome to take it to any level that you want it does not mean that you remain poor and uh, do not do this kind of material achievements you can do whatever you want as long as there are no impurities the problem is impurities the problem is not how much money you are earning or not what you are contributing to that field in which you are working for a seeker the employee employer 9 to 5 kind of job is worst possible and if you are in the kinds of jobs which involve a lot of violence and just exposure to inhuman kind of things like butchering animals like a soldier like a policeman where you need to deal with um things that are kind of disgusting do not do that job at least in the beginning find something which is uh, pure and if you are a bodhisattva yes everything is good for you then no problem i don't know what to do with the school teachers and all you will need to deal with deal with them and you are too young and immature at the time to even know that it is impure just get rid of the abusive and exploitative teachers don't pay too much try to learn from somebody else the knowledge is same everywhere a teacher who is demanding a lot of money is not necessarily a good teacher it does not mean that he knows more than the others it sim- it simply means that he is famous and he is misusing his name to earn more as soon as you detect a teacher who is trying to brainwash or mislead you you should immediately leave respect all teachers it does not matter what kind of teacher he is just be respectful leave respectfully if you need to do not insult teachers because the other person is going to learn from you and we don't want to set a bad example even if our experience with the teacher is not good do not speak for the teacher and do not speak from his mouth let the teacher speak do not hold opinions about other teachers it's not our business to judge anybody i'm going to make a separate episode just on teachers so i'm not going to say more here and what kind of spiritual seeker you are if you are using your teacher to show off your superiority that is some kind of mental retardation you are a deluded seeker or you are not even a seeker you are just ordinary person if you find yourself getting dependent on the seeker on the teacher you need to do the same thing which you did with your relatives slowly distance yourself from the teacher learn whatever you can and then distance yourself from the teacher a student should not be emotionally dependent on the teacher the, the relation is purely of taking you take as much as from the teacher and teacher is ready to give the teacher is not asking anything if the teacher is asking anything well he is not a teacher it's a impure relation it is just an occupation of some kind and even there if you are dependent then nobody can help you you cannot see it as an occupation is yes, the teacher is very giving very loving very kind so it is possible for the student to fall very quickly into an attachment with the teacher so you need to be careful similarly the teachers get attached to the students and if you are a teacher you find this thing you need to be careful do not depend on your students for anything whether it is prestige whether it is um, egoic stuff whether it is power whether it is money or whether it is physical relations of any kinds not really recommended it has its consequences this is an impurity in the teacher student relation sometimes it happens and then you will need to enter into a giving relation just like with any other relative and impurities with strangers well, i don't have a lot of uh, uh, tips here because it's kind of very obvious what we should do with the strangers we just treat them like strangers that's all which means you do not know them you do not judge them you do not discriminate and you do, you are not anti social you do not harm anybody secondly you don't be afraid of the strangers 
If you are afraid, that means the problem is in you, not in the strangers. They are just strangers. They are all kinds. So take precautions and then be, and then be fearless. Learn to defend yourself from others. And the best kind of defense is do not get into a situation which is risky with the strangers. Tolerate strangers as much as you can and then avoid them. You don't need to tolerate them for all of your life. If you go to some place where people are not behaving properly, then tolerate their a little bit. As soon as your work is over, never go to that place again. Make your life easy. There is no need to fix strangers. They are strangers. Finally, you should not have anything to do with the ruling class. Don't interfere in their affairs. Let them rule. This is a social evil and a seeker has nothing to do with it. A seeker has nothing to do with any of the social evils. Yes, your government is evil, your military is evil. We have nothing to do with it. Remember, these are the tribal tendencies. And if you are reacting to that, that means there is an impurity in your tribal tendencies. You are still engaged in the material world. Oh, people are torturing me. I don't have equal rights. I cannot do anything here I want. I meditate and they put me in jail. Tell me why are you there? Tell me why do you live in that country? Oh, I need to earn and all. That means most of the things are wrong in your life. You are blaming somebody else for your life. No, I have my job, I have my relatives and I have my dog. Then be ruled. Then you deserve to be ruled. If your freedom is your first priority, you should leave that place as soon as possible. Take your relatives with you. Who is stopping you? Take your dog with you. A seeker does not fix a country. A seeker leaves the country. A seeker is not attached to a place. There is no motherland for a seeker. There is no mother. There is no father. There is no tribe. It's not my country. It's not mine. My duty is very simple. I should not cause any harm to this society. I should not cause any harm to the ruling class. And I'm okay with it. Now everybody is happy. Obey the social rules and then there is no shame in that. And if you find exploitation and uh, autocracy, actually that will be there in every country. I don't want to give you any false hope. There is no country here which is not like this. There is no heaven. You will need to compromise. You will need to make um, adjustments and put your goal in front of you. Put your spiritual goal in front of you. Forget about other things. Some things are not in our control. We are not well equipped. We are not empowered to do it all. Yes, there is frustration. Yes, there is anger. You need to see it coming and you need to let go of it. Do not engage here. Do not get involved here. We are here to leave. We are not here to fix.